I've got seven o'clock, so why don't we go ahead and get started? Do you want to do the roll call, please? All right, uh, Robert Hannon. I'm here. Robert Eisner. Here. Ned uh, Statchen. Ned, are you there? I saw him on there. I did too. We'll come back. He's probably, maybe he has a mic problem. Um, where was I? Uh, Richard uh, uh, Berlandi? Here. David Fox? Here. Neil uh, Kelsey? Here. Mark uh, Simpson? Robert uh, Canto? Here. And uh, Emily Brick? Ned, are you there? Ned, Ned Sashin here. We got you. All right. Uh, for the record, I uh, viewed the video of last, uh, the first meeting of the month. Okay, thanks, Ned. All right, so we'll start the Inland Wetlands Commission meeting of March 15th, 2023. First item on the agenda is 402 Farmington Avenue, LLC. All right. I saw Ben on there. Is uh, Tom there, Ben? Yes, Tom should be here as well. Hey, where is he at? I saw him all the way down at the bottom. Yeah, Tom's at the bottom. There he is. <clears throat> uh, so, so do you do you want me to, to speak, Bruce? No, uh, Tom, is, uh, if you want Tom, however you want to work it. Tom is well, on now, I think. Yeah, so Tom and I are both here available to answer any questions. We went through... Really, the the bulk of our presentation last last meeting. The the one comment I did receive from staff uh, pertained to question of whether or not the um, proposed activities would involve in any um, lasting activities, and I uh, confirm that it's uh, lasting is not um, part of what we are requesting to do with uh, in connection with this application. So we we do not anticipate needing to hitting any rock. Um, the, the trench for the water line, as we stated last time, is already existing. And to the extent in widening that trench or um, for the installation of the, the, uh, electro the electric uh, telecom lines, if we do encounter any ledge, uh, it's our intention to, um, to just hoe ram it. It shouldn't be, should be very minimal. Okay. Tom, did you have anything you wanted to add? No, it's my understanding that uh, there was a statutory requirement, so we had to wait to to this meeting to to uh, for the commission to make any dis decision. So, but it, with that, uh, myself and Ben are more than happy to answer any questions the commission may have. Well, just so we're clear, this is the earliest we could make a decision. Correct. Correct. <laughs> correct. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yes, uh, I am. Um, I'm, I'm not sure what I said, but uh, yeah, I meant that. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and also, before we get going on this with comments, Bobby, uh, have you seated for Mark tonight? So you'll be voting for Mark in Mark's place. Okay. So with that, uh, Rich, I'll go to you. Any questions, comments, concerns? Uh, no, I don't. No, no questions, comments, or concerns. Thank you. Thank you. Bobby? No, I'm all set. All right, Dave? I'm all set as well. Thank you. Robert? All set. Thank you. Okay. Neil? Uh, no questions. I'm all set. All right. Thank you. Ned? Um, yeah, I, I just, I thought this might have been covered, but I just want to double check. The, um, the two pipes uh, that carry uh, the water from the vernal pool and, and into the stream and go under the road, are those going to conflict with the new lines going in at all or is the elevation difference too great yeah the elevation is, is different those pipes are actually down pretty pretty low and uh, there's actually already utilities going across those so uh, we looked at the inverts and um, that's a really a fill situation so the utilities are able to go right over the top of those so there won't be any modifications or adjustments to those pipes they're going to stay as is and we'll just go right over the top of them okay thank you that's all i have Okay, thanks. And for once, I don't really have any comments. Um, so with that, um, 
Bruce, do we have to make a formal motion that this is not a significant activity? Nope, that was done uh, at okay. the last meeting. All right, I guess it would help if I got to the right page and I looked at the, I guess some of the comments on it. So with that being the case and not really hearing any concerns about this, would somebody care to make a motion to approve the application for this minor modification? So moved, Ned. Is there a second? Dave will second. Okay, so we have a motion on the table to approve the application. Um, again, I think the big things that need to work out with, with staff really is erosion sedimentation control. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll leave it up to staff to work out all the final details on that. I don't think we have any other questions or comments that we need uh, conditionally added to this. So, um, so those in favor of the application to approve, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, abstaining. Okay, good luck with the project. Thank you very Thank much. You very much. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is FHI Studio, 95 Batterson Park Road. Uh, we have Phil Barlow here. Phil? Yes. Phil, there's a Robert yeah. Newton from the BSC group in the uh, uh, attendees. Is he part of the uh, presentation as well? He is. No. Okay. No, I just uh, want to make sure if I needed to promote him or not. Yeah, just Dave, David Quisenberry may talk. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, want me to go ahead? Yeah, go ahead. All, all, right. Yours. All, right. all right, all right. So good evening. Uh, my name is Phil Barlow. I'm a landscape architect with the FHI Studio. And we are working with the city of Hartford as part of the program management team to uh, to bring Batterson Park back online. So you, you may know that Batterson Park and the pond were given to the city of Hartford by the Hartford Water Company in 1928. And the city uh, made it into a park. Uh, the pond's 165 acres. Uh, the park is unusual in that it's owned by Hartford, but no part of the property is within Hartford. It's in uh, Farmington and New Britain, although it's, it's not unique. Um, Elizabeth Park uh, in West Hartford is also a Hartford-owned park that is not in the city of Hartford. Uh, Batterson Park for many, many decades, I understand, was a very popular destination for Hartford and Farmington residents. But for one reason or another, um, it was not maintained and the park was closed in 2015 uh, and has been closed since that point. The city has now obtained funding to renovate the park and bring it back online. Um, we have a design team on board, uh, of which David Quisenberry of Quisenberry Arcari Malik Architects is a member. Uh, Dave's with us tonight, and I'll get into his role a little bit later. Um, BSC is leading that effort, so we are working on a master plan okay. for the park that we hope to have finished uh, around the end of May. Uh, from there, we want to go right into a first phase construction document. Uh, and construction phase, which we hope to have finished um, uh, the construction at the uh, end of the 2025 construction season. Uh, we also have CSG Environmental um, on our team. Uh, they're working on the water quality uh, of the uh, well, of the pond. Well, that's GZA, you said CSG. Oh, I'm sorry, GZA uh, is on board to work on the environmental uh, uh, quality of, of the water. Uh, they do have a short-term and a long-term plan uh, to make that happen. So why we're here tonight is that uh, a couple of reasons. Um, one, uh, as an interim measure, the city would like to open the park this summer on a limited basis uh, for swimming activities and make part of that uh, property available. Uh, so with that, we need to remove uh, the buildings on the property. Uh, Dave took a look at the buildings back in 2019 and again, uh, this year, and we've determined that they're they're not salvageable for use. Some of them are dangerous and dilapidated. Uh, so our plan is is to remove all the buildings uh, on site. Go to the next page, Bruce. Uh, so here's a plan. Oh, can do you have the colored plan, Bruce? I apologize. Did you send me that? I did send that a little later. Yeah. 
Um, I think it's in a different file. I have to go back to my computer. Okay, I can I can work yeah, from this I one. Can just go with this one. I apologize. So we have um, we have buildings in the setback in the wetland setback. Mm -hmm. The bigger building you see there, yes, that's a locker room building, and you can see the setback just kind of cuts the corners of it. Uh, behind that is a caretaker's cottage. Uh, that building has actually uh, burned uh, due to arson. It's still standing. Um, uh, the fire department got it out in time, but it, it is a, a shell. Um, we have a small shed just south of the locker room building uh, that's in the setback. And we also have uh, several picnic tables. Um, you'd think a picnic table would be easy to remove, but they do have concrete embedments uh, into the ground. So some of those are in the setback also. Uh, we also have several buildings that are not in the setback. Uh, you can see to the north there, a complex of three buildings. That's uh, two maintenance building and a restroom building. Um, and we do have one small, you can't, can't even call it a building, it's really a shed uh, for the caretaker's cottage that uh, is in the wetland. So uh, several buildings in the setback, partially several buildings in the upland area, uh, in the one shed um, that uh, is in the wetlands. So, Dave, anything you'd like to add to the uh, the building assessment? Um, just just that, um, as Phil mentioned, we did assessments um, several years ago. Um, which was key to getting the funding in place to do this project. And then uh, as we were hired to move forward with the project uh, this year, um, we reassessed things. Um, the, the caretaker's cottage, as an example, um, burned between the times we did our initial assessment and now. Um, and uh, so really just, just to reiterate what Phil said is our Interpretation is to make this park a nice place for the future. We really need to start over. And so the plan is to basically remove, remove all the structures. Obviously, once the master plan is done and we determine what new man-made structures are part of the eventual park plan, there'll be subsequent return to you to um, discuss whatever might be proposed to be constructed. And we will be removing uh, foundations as well, removing all debris from the site, uh, topsoiling and seating um, the areas of the buildings. So we'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. I want to just ask a, a quick question, looking at the application form, so the city of New Britain is not within 500 feet of this area? Not of this demolition area, no. Okay. Um, all right. And just to make sure everybody's on the same page, what you're asking for right now is just the authority to remove the buildings and the picnic tables. And is there something going on with the sand on the beach? Not at this point. Uh, that'll be part of the longer term effort in the master plan. Um, we'll just be raking it out and using what we have for the summer. Okay. I just, yeah, I just want to make sure that everybody's clear what we're talking about here. No, thank you. Okay. So um, you, you, of course, will be seeing more of us as we develop the, um, the construction documents in the master plan. Yeah, because again, I think one of the things that we're looking at is that if this should go forward, we want to make sure with what you're proposing now expresses the limits of what you actually do on site and not take certain liberties and go beyond the scope of this application. So, oh, okay. sure. No, we, we, we've got a long road ahead of us. Okay. So, Rich, I'll start with you. Any questions? Um, the, only, the only question I have is I assume that there'll be uh, sedimentation and erosion controls uh, around the work area. Um, as you're demolishing those buildings? Yes, at the moment we have a proposed silt fence um, around all the buildings. Okay, that, that's the only question. That's the only question I have. Okay, thank you, Bobby. 
Uh, you mentioned the microphone. Can you hear me? Yes. All right. You mentioned uh, filling in foundations. What are you using for a fill? Uh, a gravel. Recycle gravel or, or is it? Uh, probably would not be recycled. Okay. I'll stand by for now. Is that it, Bobby? Yeah, for now, uh, that's it. Okay. All right. Thank you. Dave? Um, yeah, I had a question. Um, at least ac according to the map, it looks like the wetland boundary along the lake was actually uh, done by a survey. But the wetland where that building is is just the town town mapping, which is is really very much off off from real what real wetlands are. Um, so that that building might not be in a wetland at all, really. Has anybody did this the survey not look in that area? That's correct. Yeah, we didn't have the uh, wetlands flagged in that area. Um, so we did take that off the town map. Okay. This survey was old. This was an older survey from, uh, when was that done, Phil? Uh, 2013 by uh, yeah. Connecticut Ecosystems. And, oh, and Ed Pollock. We had, we had met, we had met uh, uh, today and you said you're, you're having a new uh, survey done for the property. Yes. For the, uh, yes. the master plan. Okay. Yes. So the next, yes. Yeah, I think once you start constructing things, we want to know with, with, where the wetlands really are. Right. That, that's all of, I have. That's all I have. Part of, as part of the design team, which is, as Phil mentioned, is led by BSC, they've already started uh, doing a survey. They're, they're going to be doing full wetlands mapping of the area. So again, when we, when we would ever come forward with any construction plans, we would have up-to-date surveys, up-to-date wetlands, all of that would be represented in any of the drawings that we produced. Okay, thank you. Okay, Robert? Yeah, um, the site is obviously a, a, a resource that should be used in the project at this point. Um, I see it's just maintenance for safety purposes so that the park can be safely used. So I, I think fundamentally it, it makes sense to do this. I do have a procedural question that would go, I guess, to Bruce, uh, building off of the question that the chairman raised. Is the trigger for notifying the adjoining municipality the site or where the specific regulated activity is? And I'm thinking down the road for the, the larger um, application that we may see. It's technically the site, but there was okay. no notice. Yeah, there's no notice because it wasn't a, a, a public hearing, so. Mm -hmm. Okay, but even in there's does that requirement is it even an application or is it only for hearings? I thought the application itself required notice. I think the application may may actually require notice as well. I'm that's, not. That's my saying. understanding yeah. too. So, yeah, you know, I'd still like to to move on what's before us, but I think okay. it, when we're looking down the road, um, that notification probably would need to be done from the outset. Mm -hmm. End of my comments. Thank you. Okay. okay thanks. Thank you, Neil. Um, I don't. I don't have anything additional. Just on the on the map here, in that box in the upper quadrant, um, upper left, um, those are all the picnic tables. Is that right? That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Just if you can believe that, that uh, those are all picnic tables. Yeah. Okay. Because I know their camp had a had an amphitheater there years ago. Is, is that th on this property, or is that further to the west? I guess. I think it's further to the west. I, I have not seen it on this property. Okay, thank you. Nothing further. All right, thank you. Ned? Ned, you're on mute. Where is he? Yeah, okay. Um... I'm looking where the where the wetland kind of takes the jog in. Is is that a like a where the yeah yeah that there? 
Um, and then next to that, you have a bituminous area, and then it then it then there's another designation that the, the map says wetlands area, but it's it's not designated with the wetland boundary. Yeah, that, I. I'm sorry. Go ahead. That, that, I mean that's that's not or that was determined not to be a wetland area, and that's why it's not designated with the blue. No, I, honestly, we just overlooked. Um, we overlooked the um, making that a bold line. Okay. So, is is there going to be work in this area as well, or no? Well, most, uh, most yeah. So then you're over on the other side where the, you're removing the buildings. Yeah, if you come on down a little bit, Bruce. Yeah, trying to having all kinds of yeah. problems with this thing all of a sudden. <laughs> there there is um a, that little shed building which is you see the silk yeah. fence there it's right above yeah. the silk fence yeah i see that and, yeah so that that's coming out now um where you remove the buildings if there's a concrete pad is that going as well it is yes okay everything will be topsoiled all right same with uh, any bituminous areas or? Well, we're not this? taking, yeah, there's a couple old basketball courts that somebody referred to, and uh, we didn't plan to take those out at this point. Um, okay. I'm sure they'll come out with the bigger project. Okay. Right. The, ex the existing, you know, pavement, courts, things like that, we didn't see those as an imminent hazard to getting the park open. Um, so, so, you know, we're just trying we're to just do try the limited amount that we can to get this open to the public um, and safe. And then, obviously, when there's a construction master plan, we determine anything else that needed to go. So there could be future demolition of, you know, parking lots or basketball courts, but not necessary for this summer. Okay. All right. Thank you. That's all I have. Okay, thank you. I mean, the one comment I have is typically what we're looking for in town is not using silk fence per se, but using um, the silk socks. Just find it it's better for erosion control and being this close mm -hmm. to a water body, mm -hmm. we would probably want to see that incorporated for erosion control measures. And that's something that can be worked out with the town, you know, providing this goes forward. Um, that's pretty much been our standard practice. If you want to use the silk fence with the silk socks, that's fine. Um, but at a minimum, I think it would be using the silk socks for erosion control. Um, I really don't have any other comments on that. I mean, I've once upon a time, I used to spend time down here. It was a fun place. Uh, it'd be great to see this active again. It's a great piece of property. So I, I think both Hartford would be happy with it as well as the town of Farmington and New Britain to have some of its residents have another source of recreational activity. So um, I guess with that, uh, the first question I'll ask folks is, does somebody want to make a motion to accept the application? Uh, Chair, if you don't mind me uh, putting in here, are they, we had, they had originally proposed to bring in the sand for the beach when they first made the application, yep. and then they had since pulled that out. So with that, I was throwing that back to the, the commission to see what they felt, if this is something that we needed to go through the full application process, or if this could be an as of right since, since it was just pulling out the foundations. So I don't know, I don't, I don't know if you want to dis discuss that at all. I mean, I would have raised it if somebody else had talked about it, but that didn't seem to really cross anybody's mind. Okay, so, no, that's fine. I just wanted to know. I wasn't sure yeah. Yeah. Was if, if people were aware of that, so I just wanted to bring that up. No, that, that's also part of the reason why I, I asked the question about the sand earlier, and that okay. was clarified. So I think we, we have a good okay. idea where we're going with this. So, but having said that, would somebody care to make a motion to approve the application? I'll make the motion to approve it. Is there a second? Second, Ned. I have a motion to accept the application. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 And then I do not feel as though this is a significant activity and I'm assuming the rest of you feel the same way because it's just taking down the buildings. 
So if that's the case, voice your opposition now, or I'm going to re you know, ask for a motion to indicate this is not a significant activity. I would think this is just property management. I, I would agree it's not significant, Mr. Okay. Rich. So would somebody care to make a motion that this is not a significant activity? So moved, Ned. Is there a second? Second, Rich. I have a motion on the floor to indicate this is not a significant activity. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining? Okay, and my guess is that this will work out so that we would be most likely rendering a decision at the next meeting, this is the first meeting in April. All right, well, thank you. Thank you, and good luck with it. Thank you, appreciate thank it. You Up next on the agenda is one of our old friends, Winding Trails is back. I think Scott Brown is on and uh, Brian uh, Cunningham, the engineer, are both on. Yes, how are you? Scott, you want me to take this for a bit? You can, yeah, go ahead, Brian. You drew this all out. That'd be great. Okay. All right. Um, what we're proposing to do is to improve access, accessible access to the beachfront from the parking lot that is opposite our driveway, um, excuse me, the parking lot opposite the bathhouse with the driveway in between. And if, if Bruce, if you could just zoom in on the playscape area, that'll get us pretty much where we wanna be. Yeah. Uh, right here, right there, right? Yeah. A little, little closer maybe, or? Well, I got I have other sheets. This is just a general. Uh, this is just a okay. general overview showing okay. so the commission knows where we're where we're talking about. Being okay. All right. The um the sidewalk that we're proposing runs from the bathhouse down to the beach, um, partly on the alignment of existing sidewalk. Um, it ends up between or just to the north of the um, playscape that we just did last year. And there's a pair of catch basins down right by the the lakefront in the grass area where we firmed that area up to keep runoff from running down the beach. I'm and any runoff goes in those catch basins on either side of the proposed sidewalk. The viewing area is a 10 foot by 15 foot concrete pad. We have a six foot wide sidewalk, just about at grade running back toward the um, little access way to the playscape right where the cursor is. That's right about the limit of the upland review area. And then from there, we change the grade. Uh, we're going up a slope there, which was a little bit steeper than 8%, which is the maximum allowed for accessible sidewalk. Uh, we got 7.4%. We'll be filling about a, a foot in some areas, up to a foot um, from in front of the bathhouse down to match grades uh, right near that sidewalk that goes into the playscape area. Um, we'll be taking about 50 foot of existing sidewalk out. Some of that's shown into cross hatching. And we'll just do a little connection. Uh, we're trying to open up the beach area a little bit in phases. We'll be back with some other project work uh, later this year, but we wanted to try to get this sidewalk improvement done before this coming season. Um, as far as erosion control measures, we're proposing a compost sock along the top of the beach outside the work area, stretching from uh, one catch basin to the other. It's about 35 feet in length. Uh, we also are proposing hay bales surrounding those two existing catch basins. They're at low points and we just don't want to have any issues with that. Uh, very minimal grading, as I said, just really is just to remove the topsoil, put base in and build a sidewalk back to existing grade. We'll do some minor 
uh, backfill on the edge of the sidewalk and see that. And that's that's about the extent of that work. What we uh, we tie in to a couple of years ago, we built concrete sidewalks from the bathhouse to the boathouse. And we're just gonna match into the terminus of that, the northerly terminus of that, um, and with eyes toward uh, some future work up in that area, but not at this time. Um, I think that touches on all that I, yeah, all the notes that I had. Overall, it's about 170 foot of sidewalk. Just, just as a reference point. And like I said earlier, only 55 feet of that is, is technically within the, the Upland Review area. So with that, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. I don't know. Okay. Um, Rich, I'll start with you, but sort of two prongs on this one is one, any questions? And two, whether or not with this, activity we need to have the application for it or is it just sort of some general maintenance to follow up and continue to utilize the property because what i think you said it was like 55 feet within the 150 foot setback area that's that's correct okay so rich comments um question on the sides of the sidewalk are you just going to loam and seed the to uh, match that in? Yes. Yep. Yeah, it's pretty much at grade in the area there. We're not looking to change the grade down. That's in the flatter area where mm -hmm. people picnic more. Um, we'll do the grade changes that we need to on the upper area and, and hopefully open up some more picnic space. Okay. That, that's the only question I have. Um, it doesn't really look like a major, major project. Um, that's it. All right, thanks, Rich Bobby. No, I would consider this um, property maintenance, and I don't see any problems with it. Okay, thank you, Dave. I don't, I don't see any problems as well. Um, I assume you're 95 feet from the water. Yes, we are. Okay, thank you. That's it. Okay, thanks. Robert? Um, I have the same question as Rich, uh, because the sidewalk area has had some problems on site with some rills forming along the side, so it's uh, you're not doing anything to address the um, stability of the shoulders for the new sidewalk? Well, it'll be, we'll be doing some just minor uh, grading just to match you know, because you're going to disturb a little bit to do your form work for the sidewalk. So he's going to have to backfill those areas and then just recede those. But isn't there some existing um, drainage rills already on site next to the sidewalk? Uh, not really in this in this area, no. Okay, All right. Thank you. And no questions. Okay, thanks, Robert. Neil? Um, yeah, just a, the question, Brian, going back to something you said earlier, the um as part of the i think it was a playscape project you, you you created a little bit of a berm between those two catch basins um are you knocking down part of that berm now as you put the sidewalk across that or no absolutely not um actually all the all the, the runoff from the sidewalk area or anything that the sidewalk catches will probably go to the catch basin by the um uh, playscape okay it's a that's just the way the topography is there we're really we're not we're not lowering we're not raising the grade of that burn uh, it seems to be working very nicely as it is okay okay that's all i have thank you okay thanks neil ned yeah um where there's the bituminous walkways uh coming off off the sidewalks behind the main bathhouse so you're, you're going to remove some of those and then tie some of that into the new sidewalk. Yeah, we're gonna we'll, we're going to do a little bit of bituminous to tie into the new concrete sidewalk right by the where that says seven point four percent grade in the middle of the proposed sidewalk. Yeah, and it's just to you know bring people that are used to going the low road to bring them over to the new sidewalk. Okay. And that's all oh. that's about. 
So that, not- so that area will remain bituminous and not part of the new sidewalk. Correct. You're just kind of matching it up. We just want to match it up for the yep. summer. Yep. Okay. That's all I have. Oh, and then I think this is just a property maintenance and I don't think it's uh major work. Thanks, Ned. And I don't have anything else to add. I, I don't feel as though it's any type of a major issue or whatever. So, I mean, I'm just as happy um, not even having to deal with the application on this with the relatively minor work that's being proposed. Um, it sounds like most of the other commission members feel the same, that we don't need to take a formal application on this one. And this is more just some routine maintenance to improve access to this the property. And am I everybody else on board with that? Just to make sure I'm not overstepping my bounds here. It sounds good. Works for me. Okay, so yeah, I, I can I concur with the provision that they continue to work with Bruce and town staff. Yeah. I concur to the stretch. Okay. So Bruce, okay. you have your marching orders on this one, so we don't need to have a formal application for this. Okay. Okay. And right. good luck with the project, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yep. Bye bye. Bye. Have a good evening. You too. Uh, next up, Nine Apple Tree Lane. I saw George uh, Logan on. I'm here. Okay. Here too. Whenever you're ready, George. Yeah, um, I think the first thing probably we should do, by the way, good evening, everyone. <laughs> um, George. So I think the first thing we do is go to the revised plan because I did a few more things there to hopefully help with the commission. So uh, the things that I did on this plan since the last time you saw it is colored. Uh, it's so, for instance, it says that it's revised uh, today's date. Uh, I've been asked to put a scale on it, which is plus or minus, but it's it's there, um, which is covered now. I don't know why. Oh, there we go. Um, it's plus or minus 25. I couldn't get it exactly because of what how I did this. But anyhow, so it's, um, you know, you could scale from the 40 uh, side year line. You could scale from the 50 and, you know, the average is 25. <laughs> At any rate, so, and I see something, a line move there, but that's okay. The map, the wetland boundary somehow moved. Oh, did it? Oh. Yeah, the whole thing moved a little bit. I don't know why, but anyhow, we can we can always fix that. Um, so, and I sh- it's probably my fault. I should have locked it and maybe I didn't, but anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, note in the bottom left is that the entire area that you see here is within the 150 upland review area. Um, and I have a calculation in the memo that I uh, I also put, oh, there we go, that was fixed. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I put uh, calculations of the square footage for each of the areas. So you can see the area B, 2000 square feet, area A, 1270, area C, which is the, the wet swale, um, 2570 obviously plus or minus a, a few square feet. Um, under 10, under the um, sequence there, if you will, we have three full growing seasons. I had two originally and Bruce recommended three. So we're going with three, which is actually pretty standard, I suppose. Um, I also under number six, and remember I said that we should use um, an erosion control blanket of some some kind. So there you have a North American green. Everyone's familiar with those. Um, and that's the light one. That's the temporary. Uh, and it's photo, de- de- it goes it basically degrad- degradates by uh, by light, by UV radiation. So, um, and I think it's about a year that it takes for it to degrade. By that time, we should have plenty of uh, vegetation. Um, in 
the spec, what you saw is, and in the memo you'll see is what I recommended, is that uh, we go with the 18 foot wide blanket, because I figured that that would not only allow us to do this, the bottom of the scale, which is eight to 10 feet, um, but then also go up the sides, uh, especially on on the on the southern southwestern side where some some additional grading has happened. The other side, not so much, but we have to deal with that also. And the you know what I said in the memo was basically that uh, we can we have to smooth because we do have some some um, slopes that are a little aggressive. And actually, the aggressive slopes are on the other side. So we'll have to, uh, we don't want to cut back into the other property, obviously, too much. Uh, we don't want to expand the swale necessarily too much. So I think most of the, the uh, smoothing for better grade will be on the, on the southern side uh, towards Nine Apple Tree. Uh, there you have it. So you can kind of see from that picture that. Uh, the, the right is smoother and not as steep, but then we have a little bit of undercutting that's happened on the other side. We still have to deal with that to the extent we can without going into the grass too, too much. And I figured with the um, erosion control blanket uh, properly stapled on that side with a seed mix under it, uh, we should have plenty of good vegetation. Uh, so I'm more, more worried about where the water flows, obviously, uh, during even a bigger storm. So if you go want to back, go back to the plan, Bruce. Whoops. Okay. So what else did I have here? I think that's it. Now, one of the things that Bruce had asked me to do, and that was also in the in the, um, in the review memo, the interoffice memo, uh, is to check the property immediately to the west, because as you probably realize, the cutting was the the, the clearing happened to the edge of the property. Um, and there was some indication from a soil survey or the Farmington GIS that there might be wetlands there. Now, I had looked at it once before, I think during my first, uh, um, I forget when it was, but when Mr. Mr. Jackson and I were out there, and he was kind of showing me around. Uh, Bill Jackson was the original soil scientist. And I did take a couple of cores there at that time, but I figured, hey, let's let's take a closer look. So um, about a week or so ago, maybe it was a little mo more. Uh, there are no wetlands there. Those are mildly well-drained soils. Um, it's it's quite obvious. And I had a picture to kind of show what it looks like. Uh, there's no indication of hydrology. There's no indication of any wetland vegetation. So that's pretty clear. Oops. Yep. And there it is. Yep. That shows uh, one of my shots with my auger in the ground. Um, and that's on the on the neighbor's property. But when I was out there, we were kind of discussing whether or not we needed to put some vegetation along the edge of the property. Uh, more of a friendly gesture to the neighbor than, than anything else. Um, and then Mr. Rodriguez informed me that he he was actually planning on continuing his, um, his privacy screening along the entire uh, westerly property boundary. I'm like, okay, so at least we're doing something there that's going to be a, a nice screen for the neighbor um, and also vice versa, honestly. Um, the other thing that um, I struggle a little bit with, I'll be honest with you, was that whether it's to expand these areas that we're looking at here to provide more of a of a buffer, if you will, to uh, the regulated area, the one that's gonna be restored, plus the swale. And the more I thought about it is, well, from looking at some of the original photographs that Mr. Uh, Jackson had provided, and then I think on uh, one of the May 2022 um, combined photos, there's a whole bunch of them, I think like 17 photos that uh, Bruce had, yeah, I. And then looking at the aerial photographs, it was obvious to me that where the swale entered the 11 apple tree lane property, uh, there was a big mess of shrubs. So um, it appeared that, you know, you can see it there in the, in the far you know, 
know, that mound of shrubbery that you see there. And my, my view of looking at it and asking uh, uh, Mr. Jackson, he says, oh yeah, there was a bunch of prickers there, multiflora rose, other invasive. So as the wetland sort of expanded a little bit into that property, the, the first stage of it, yep, you, you passed it. The first stage of it was basically, uh, even though it was wetland, it was a scrub shrub with multiflora rose. So I kind of got thinking about it. So whenever we propose a buffer, the buffer has to be sort of commensurate, the upland buffer to a wetland, to a regular resource, has to sort of, sort of be commensurate to what the functions and values of a particular resource are. What's happening there? What is it doing? And in this particular case, as you probably remember from, I think our first presentation where I, I kind of looked at what the town had provided in the comparison between the photograph that only Farmington has and no one else does apparently. I looked at the Google, then I went into a deep dive into the archival aerial photographs online from uh, Connecticut uh, State Library, uh, from Yukon Magic, etc. cetera. And, and what I discovered, as you recall, is if you looked at the 1965 aerial photograph, there is no signature of a wetland on either nine or 11 apple tree. It's very obvious that the wetlands were further uh, to the north. There was no swale at that time. But, you know, the, I looked at it carefully. And what I saw is that the obviously the water kept coming there because there's a signature of a, of a water course in the wetland. It reached that stone wall. And then there was a ditch that went east, east west or west-east. And then it, it took a, a quick uh, 90 degree. And you can see the signature of a swale uh, that's running north-south along what used to be the um, the apple tree orchard, apparently. It was an orchard, obviously. If they, apparently, it was an apple tree because that's the apple tree lane. I can't tell for that. And I think when the development was going to happen and they decided to do this whale, which kind of went in an angle. I think what happened there, in my view, is that if you look at the old aerial photographs, 65, 70, and 51, um, there was not much development in that watershed, but then as development increased, there was a uh, higher incidence and frequency of flooding. And I'm, I'm pretty sure the water was overflowing into um, what was then a field. And so they wanted to formalize it a little better when you know the property boundaries were placed and the lots were, um, were configured. That's what we ended up doing. So again, long story short to say that uh, the swale in particular and the wetlands to the south of the stone wall, the prominent stone wall, um, were, were basically man-made or man-influenced man to a great degree. So their functions are limited um, until you get on the other, the other side of the wall, which is obvious. Um, and this was more for conveyance. So that's a conveyance function more than anything else. And then, of course, it goes to the pipe and to the road system. So I guess what I'm trying to say is that the, the buffer would have to be commensurate for the long-term protection of the functions and values uh, that these wetlands confer. Um, and the other thing, you know, that you can see there the uh, where the water, and we got some water the other day, uh, I guess. So that's, I think the first time I've seen water flowing uh, since I've looked at it probably now five or six times. Um, and so, the buffer that we're proposing, in my professional view, is commensurate to the functions that were not only there before, but what is going to be there uh, past the restoration plan being implemented. Um, and again, with the, the invasive species are not there. We have a program to remove them for the three years. Uh, and the diversity and quantity of vegetation is commensurate with what's going on there. And I would venture to also say that uh, we've selected uh, planting materials that are going to actually diversify uh, the types of vegetation that's there and, and possibly be an, a sort of a net enhancement for that area once we're done. Um, so that was another thing. There was a question of, of whether we should consider conservation easement. Obviously, I'm not against conservation easements. Um, uh, I haven't really talked to uh, my client about that, um, the comment that I had in my memo is that the 
the um, the the screening that's happening with Aprovide uh, is going to be, in essence, the limit of what's going to be happening. So whatever's on the other side is de facto protected because of that screening. Um, what else? Um, one thing we didn't put on the plan, I think that was discussed the last time was the use of um, the silt sock for erosion, for temporary erosion control um, of those areas. And if I haven't put it in there, I don't remember. That should be obviously something that we need to do. Um, and that would be protection for the entire area that's going to be temporarily exposed before it gets stabilized. So I expect that I would see it um, for at, at the bottom of any slope that's being graded or smoothed, which would include the swale. Uh, but it would have to be up a little bit from the flow line, obviously. Um, so let's see. I'm trying to remember what else I put in there that I'm trying to uh, respond to all of uh, Bruce's comments for consideration. Um, let's see, going down here. Oh, yeah, I did. <clears throat> There's approximately, if you take the 9 and 11 apple tree lane, the question was how much of the URA has been involved? So I kind of took a, a guess by looking at those aerial photographs that were provided early on by the town and did a little polygon around it and figured I was 27 thousand seven hundred and fifty square feet yep um the estimation of how much a delineated wetland has been disturbed which includes the wet swale the entire of it uh, was 3800 square feet the question was um how much was being restored i don't know why i came with 3840 uh, i guess it's the plus or minus factor but then i said that it's possible that if as we pull back um to restore that wetland, as we talked about making that gentle shelf just up from the swale on the 11 apple tree, that by doing that, we're probably going to end up increasing the wetland by maybe up to 800 square feet. Um, so I looked at the entire linear length and that said, well, if we have, it's about 100 feet, if we go back about eight feet, additional feet, by just having that four to one slope, but probably some of that slope is gonna be, or most of it's gonna be end up being uh, a wetland um, because we're already pretty close to um, seasonal groundwater there. Um, so four to one slopes, wherever they're possible. And the only area that I said that might not be exactly possible is on that upper side or the Northern part of the swale uh, where there's been a little bit of um, cutting out of the of that slope, so we need to reconstitute that to the extent that we can. Um, but I'm not sure it's going to be four to one because if it was four to one, we'd be back to the middle of the swale, and that's we don't want to compromise uh, that. And I think it would be too much earthwork to start moving everything, the entire swale, southerly. Um, we, we're asking for a little bit of trouble, so I'm trying to a little bit of a compromise as far as the slope on that side. Um, talked about the conservation easement. Uh, if, regarding irrigation, um, I didn't hear that there was any plan for irrigation. So the idea there is uh, the, the property owner is, is responsible to make sure that um, these uh, plantings are watered if they need to be. Um, because usually we don't have to worry about that. These are native plantings. We, if we put them in at the right time of the year, you know, if we start putting them in, in in July and August, well, we're asking for trouble, obviously. But if there's a drought any time of the year, then the property owner would have to be responsible to to water, and that's something that, you know, is is I'm part of the implementation of that for the first year, then I'll be on the hook to uh, remind as I see things uh, maybe drawing, drying out. Um, 
Now, the one thing that's a little bit up in the air is the uh, the installation periods. I know that uh, Bruce had put there, and I think the commission had also requested May 31st as being sort of a cutoff. So I, I gave a call to uh, Graham Anderson, who is one of the owners of, with his dad of New England Wetland Plants Inc. He's kind of my source for most of these plantings for a number of reasons. Uh, he, um, they're good quality. Uh, they're not supremely expensive, which means if you lose a couple here and there, you can replace them for not too much of a cost, which is always a good thing. Um, and what he said is that he's not sure based on the plan that I sent him that it would be a good idea based on his stock that he has uh, coming up um, for us to, it might happen, it might happen in June, but he certainly doesn't think that it would be a good idea based on what he has right now, um, just to let him to grow a little more, especially for woody stock, uh, to be planting woodies uh, in the end of May. Uh, he would suggest that we do everything else, meaning seeding the herbaceous species that can be done by June 15th, and he would recommend that, I haven't seen it in writing yet, but I'm waiting for that, that we might consider doing a fall planting for shrubs uh, and the trees, which is typically the best time of the year to do that uh, for, for a number of reasons, especially when you have young plants and root systems that need to be um, strengthened. And that usually happens much better in the fall. There's a lot more root development in the fall uh, than in other times of year. So that's that's kind of where we're at now. So the, the recommendations from the supplier was seeding and herbaceous plants uh, by June 15th or earlier, if possible. And then um, it's out, his opinion is still out. I haven't gotten it back as to whether we're going to uh, go to fall for the for the woody plantings or do those um, again by June 15th. That was the recommendation that I got. I think more or less I covered everything. Um, I think so. Um, I had him do the square footages just so the commission has an idea of what we're talking about. Is it a one for one or what? So I wanted everyone to get an idea of how much area there is uh, disturbed versus how much area is being re re restored. Yeah, again, if if the commission would want to see a little bit of an increase in the wetland within Apple, oh, there's one thing that I forgot. Let me return to what I just said. Uh, regarding the approval and the written signature from the property owner, Patricia, from Apple, from 11 Apple, uh, there was a personal communication with the, uh, Mr. Rodriguez and her. Uh, she knows more or less what we're trying to do back there. So my thought was, let's wait until we finalize what the plan is going to be. Then we can present it to her uh, and get a written signature into the record, um, unless the commission would prefer that before they, uh, they close. Um, the other somewhat complication here, it's not really a complication, uh, is that there might be a land swap uh, because as you remember, uh, part of her lawn is actually on Mr. Rodriguez's property and her front yard. <laughs> and so the idea would be to do a swap between that triangle with this triangle in the back. And if that's the case, then uh, Mr. Rodriguez would have complete legal um, ability to uh, do the restoration plan. Yeah, there you go. So you see all our front yard is on that. And then of course we have the, the little triangle in the back. So it'll be a swap of some sort. And I know that Mr. Rodriguez has, has hired a, a lawyer that I recommended who uh, I've, been, I've had experience with that kind of um, land swap between neighbors uh, in another town. Uh, Attorney Ward is his name. He's out of Torrington. So, um, yeah, so back to 
what we were doing. That was the last thing I was trying to talk here. Um, the square footages? Oh, the square footages, yeah. So if the commission, so we have 3,800 square feet that were disturbed of, of regulated resource, the delineated wealth on the swale. Um, and I said 3,840 was my initial estimation of what would be restored as shown on the map. Um, but I said that we could probably increase that by about 800 square feet. We could formalize that if the commission thought that was wise. Uh, if we did that, I don't think I have to change the, the planting because I think there's plenty, there's more plants for the wetland area than there for the upland area. So I think we're, we're good. Or we could maybe increase the, the wetland um, list by, you know, 10 or 15 shrubs or something like that. I think we have plenty of seed mix and plenty of herbaceous species for an additional 800 square feet. I think that's the rundown of what we've done since the last time. Hello? I want to let the commission know that I am going to put an irrigation system in there. Okay, thank you. Um, Mr. Chairman? Yes. I, I kind of had a question based on what was said last week or, or the last meeting and uh, by George, and, and that was that, the way I understood it, he said that, you know, a lot of this revolved around the, uh, the property swap. So, and then he said, if, if this property swap doesn't go through, then we're gonna have to make changes to this plan. So uh, I'm like, I have the feeling that, you know, we don't really know what we're getting yet. You know, I'm looking at this plan, but if it changes significantly based on, you know, some change that goes on in the property swap, then I don't know how we could think that, you know, we're seeing what, what's going to be the actual repair out there. I understand where you're coming from on that one, because I mean, to a degree, I guess... <laughs> The concern that I have is in, in, again, bringing up the aerial photo tonight, it looks as though there was a lot of a wooded area that was taken down in violation of wetland regs. And what ends up happening is somehow somebody ends up with a bigger lawn. And that's kind of what I'm wrestling with. So that's where I'm kind of coming from on this. Um, but any other comments, Ned, or was that it? Uh, well, that's it for I have for now. Okay. Neil? I, I don't have anything additional, and but but you hit on, on my concern on all this, right, is that there was an awful lot of material taken down in violation, and I'm, I'm not sure that it, it evens out when it's restored. So. Okay, thanks. Robert? I'm assuming Robert's back. Yeah, I was on mute, sorry. Okay. Uh, I share the concern uh, that Ned raised about the uncertainty with the land swap, but I also recognize um, that the land swap could take a fair amount of time. I don't want to lose the spring planting season. Um, so I think that, you know, all of those pieces are going to have to be rolled into a plan. Um, I'm okay with deferring on some of the woody species. Um, if those need to wait until the fall so they can, uh, you know, have a, a longer nursery time um, and it's better to plant them, but I think there should be a lot of the restoration done um, in the spring planting season. Um, and I feel very strongly that the restoration plan um, 
should be revised to incorporate both physical and legal protections of the wetland. Um, as others raised, there was an extensive amount of clearing of trees of the property. Um, if we don't include physical barriers and legal barriers, conservation easements, others, and, le and the physical I would see as either additional trees, boulders, and the standard marker and medallions that we use um, so that once the site is restored, it's not going to be the subject of further encroachment, um, whether it's this year, next year, three years, or five years down the line. I think there needs to be a long-term physical barrier in legal protection um, of the area that was impacted so that there's a long-term protection. So I think the plan needs to incorporate the possibility of a land swap. Um, the schedule should include spring restoration to the extent possible. Um, and then the last thing, and I think Bruce, you hate to put more work um, on your plate, but I think it would be important, Bruce, for you to have a conversation with the property owner at 11 Apple Tree um, so that they understand what's um, in play. I think the dialogue with the neighbor could be very different um, from you as the town staff versus um, through George and his client. Um, so I, I assume there's a, an ongoing good faith agreement on the land swap. I think it would be important, Bruce, for you to make sure that um, you have some direct feedback from the neighbor as to whether they're satisfied with what's happening uh, in what um, her rights are as a property owner who was impacted. Nope, I agree. And I, and I have had some preliminary comments with her in the, in the very early stages. So the intent was when, once we get to here, I definitely was going to follow up with her. Um, and uh, Robert, I kind of uh, really uh, um, agree with you in terms of the planting. Uh, this was done in October. October, so this could quickly turn into a year, you know, by the time the, the shrubs and stuff get planted. So what I would probably recommend is maybe we do a planting plan, agree on the planting plan, and maybe come back to the commission, you know, they can get that going, get it installed. And with the land swap, we can then come back to the commission with a plan showing the land swap and maybe, and then maybe uh, uh, agree on the uh, the conservation easement at the same time. If, if, if that's an idea. Yep, thanks, Bruce. And that was the end of my comments. Yep. Thanks, Robert. Dave? Yeah, I, I agree that uh, a conservation easement is, is definitely needed here, uh, given what, what has occurred after our um, permitting of very limited activities last summer um, and our attempt to stop additional clearing that obviously failed. Um, and I, I also agree that a, a lot of clearing happened that we wouldn't have probably have permitted all of it and traded woods for lawn. And, um, you have to take that into consideration in developing this uh, restoration plan. That's it for now. Okay, thanks, Dave. Bobby? Uh, yeah, um, I have a couple questions, and, and forgive me if it's already been addressed. I know I missed the meeting. Um, but, Bruce, on that first slide you put up where George was talking about it, um, there was a section in there that said that um, we're going to be removing soil that had been put on oh. there erroneously. That's, um, um, let's see, where did I do that here? Did I get kicked the, it was, kick, oh, it right was the very first slide. Oh, I got you, just, there's, we've been having some problems with this Adobe and it's like crazy here. So while uh, you look for it, here's, here. right yep. there. So this so one. So area, um, I believe it was, uh, yeah, it's uh, A. 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 Mm -hmm. My problem with it is how much are we dealing with? Um, how deep are we going? And now that it's already been put in there, are we going to do more damage to the wetlands taking it out than just leaving it alone? I mean, I understand we've got to try and, you know, 
we we don't want to we don't want to basically benefit somebody by making the the erroneous mistake he did in, in eliminating the wetlands and now giving them more land. But if we're going to destroy more than more than we're going to help by taking it out, is it beneficial to just leave it alone? George, I think you could answer that because I think it was the question of how many feet of fill did go went on top of uh, right. Uh, so, so, and then how do we get it back to its original state? So my estimation, well, here's here's the thing. So the the one thing that we're going off is the wetland delineation that was done by Mr. Jackson. So we have those flags where he delineated on the other property, which might have been contributed a little bit to the to the entire problem. Um, so when I looked at it and I tried to dig in there and it was it was not easy. Um, the material that was there placed, which is more or less flat from the uh, from area B all across, very little grade until you get to the to the actual swale. So what I think I said is that we would probably not be removing more than about a foot of material. So okay, so yard wise, if we have 1,270 feet divided by, you know, by nine, Three. that's our yards. Nine. Right. So 20, uh, and probably it'd be a, not that much because we're going to slope it up a little bit, but let's say that was the worst case scenario. And my calculator doesn't like me. <laughs> there we go. It, 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 I mean, does everybody see where I'm coming from? I mean, 140 cubic yards. Yeah, I mean, I, I understand taking it out, but if we're going to harm it more than just leave it alone and, and try and, re and and get it back into a, a decent wetland area, I'm almost inclined to just leave that section alone. Are you kind of concerned, Bobby, about like the, the suitability of the soils and do they really need to come out? Correct. That, that's my point. I mean, if it was wetlands reform and, and, and he, you know, if he just filled it in with topsoil, okay. If it was fill, then yeah, well, let's pull it out and get it back to some type of, of a wetland type scenario. But if it's just topsoil that we're not going to, we're going to leave it alone and it's eventually going to kind of erode into the wetland area that we're going to delineate, why are we, why are we messing with it? especially since it's so close to the swale. I, I would kind of disagree with that a little bit. I think if we don't lower the elevation in the area, then you're never going to get in a situation where, you know, you get a good rain and the water's going to sit there for a while because it's a, a low land area uh, or low lying area. So I think we do have to remove some of that, well, that soil. And that's why I was asking how much went in. You know, if it's the matter of seven, seven, eight inches, that's one thing. If it's two feet, then yeah, let's get it out of there. Well, the way George explains it, I think it's it's going to be a, a foot when you're, you know, at the deepest location, but then that's going to slowly, you know, slant back up along along the grade, and so it'll be, you know, much less than a foot on the other side. I apologize, everyone. This is crazy. <laughs> Adobe's not working very good today. Trying to get to the pictures that we had. That would may help decide. I think what you're looking at. Here yeah. We go. So, right. So you can kind of see there that the that that's that area. You see the stakes, right? So that's the the, the stakes of the wetland delineation. Those flags. Mm -hmm. um, and you see that there's above the the channel. That's at least two feet maybe two and a half. Um, so we're not going all the way down, but what we're doing is we're going down about a foot mm -hmm. overall. Now we might have to super excavate by six inches to put a uh, good topsoil back in. The topsoil there now is not particularly good. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we could always do a top dressing, but so that's the area. You can kind of see the stakes. Um, I can't split the screens. But what I could do is if you kind of remember what this looks like, 
No, I, I, <clears throat> no, I mean, if you go like- I follow you, and I, I, and, yeah. and I just heard what you said, you, you know, you, you got two feet there and I get it, but now you're gonna have to super excavate to get it down another six inches to add in more topsoil to get it stable. That's correct. <sighs> And then if you, you know, go back to our pictures from 511. So if you look at that, you can, I guess you can argue that it's a gentle slope down there now, whereas now it was probably brought in here, and, and dropped and off. Flattened out a little yeah. bit. So, yeah. so it's probably, so you'd say this is, this is, you could see the difference in the, in the grade. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest, that that little section right there doesn't concern me as much as the clear cut. So the clear cutting of the trees, which unfortunately we're never going to get back. And that's what we uh, tried to avoid in the beginning when this first came in front of us. Yeah. Well, one thing that if, if you allow me to say is that you're correct. You know, trees were taken out. I mean, it's quite obvious from the aerial photograph. Um Obviously, we have some some of the wetland was that shrubby uh, area, but then of course you go back. But I would say that the majority of the trees that were taken out were in the upland, not in the wetland. But even so, it's they're you know they're important for because they provide also services to the wetland function. So that's that's understandable, and that's why the plan um, tries to get some trees back. Obviously, they're not anywhere what you see there, but they're at least uh, the typical way we go about them and, and trying to restore an area. No. All right, I, I, I think I've, uh, you know, I, I beat this one and I've made my point. I just have a hard time re-exposing that area. We're almost better off leaving it alone at this point. Is that it, Bobby? That's it. Okay, thank you. Rich? Uh, Bruce, could you bring up uh, George's uh, plan? Thank you. Um, I was kind of wondering what the rationale was for the, um, the privacy screen um, not being aligned with the, with the property line. It seems to the east, um, you know, it's, it's on, on the property and then it kind of wanders off, um, and wanders up, uh, onto the neighbor's property. And, um, I, I just was wondering what the rationale for that alignment was. Should I try, try to answer that? The, again, one of the things that I looked at is, Okay, how much of upland do we restore in order to get back the functions and values that were there before? When, and I guess this is an educated guess. I wasn't there. Um, I wasn't able to glean too much from Mr. Jackson because you know his focus was more on delineating the wetlands. Um, <clears throat> so the idea there was that that area B is sufficient as a buffer to protect long-term functions and values of the restored wetland and the swale. The privacy screen, I think was Mr. Rodriguez's idea that while the area there on 11 apple tree is maturing, uh, that there's plenty of visibility to other properties. Uh, so he desired not to have a discontinuous um, screen, but a continuous screen all around. Now the yeah. question is, why did it go there? Uh, it has to do a lot with my decision as to what was sufficient to protect uh, the wetlands going forward. I, yeah, I, I kind of have a problem with uh, putting a privacy screen for the property on somebody else's property. Um, if you want a privacy screen, I, you should my feeling is that you should put it on your own property. I think the part was, this is the area that he wants to get, he wants to take from, or he wants to swap with the property owner. That line will be kicked over here 
and run down through here. So I think he's going to, he'll, he'll get this while he gives her the front. If I go back to the other picture, maybe that'll help. No, I, I, I get it. If, if, if that's what's going to happen, then it makes, then it makes sense. Okay. Um, but the way the, the drawing is currently shown without mm -hmm. the property swap, it, yeah. it kind of begs the question. Yeah. It's assuming a property swap. You're correct. And based on this side setback of 40 feet, this is probably what from here from the edge of the hedgerow to the actual wetlands here is it 15 feet you think maybe maybe 20 feet um 15 ish yeah. 15 to 17 maybe okay okay um because i mean as a practical matter once the privacy screen goes in anything to the south of it is going to be used um, you know, it's not going to be conserved. It's it's going to be lawn. It's going to be, you know, whatever, whatever he wants to do with it. Um, and that, that's my concern. That's all I have. Bob, I think I'm you. Yep. Uh, sorry about that. No, I. I stated what my primary concern is, and I agree with the comments from the other commission members. Um, I, mean, I think that I agree that we don't want to miss growing season, but I'm not sure that the plan is at a point where the commission's going to go along with it because I'm not sure that, um, I mean, to me, this seems like we're rewarding somebody from going in and violating the wetland regs because they're going to get a bigger backyard. I have a problem with that. That's, you know, that was not the intent. Um, and that's just how I feel. And it's going to take a lot to get me to change my mind on that. Um, and I, like what Rich was just saying, you turn around and you put in the privacy area, the privacy screening, the rest of the backyard is going to be lawn. I mean, that's, that's not what it was to start with. Um, there was the one picture that was shown with a lot of the wood that was already taken down and piled up. You know, you, so you get a pretty good idea as to the amount of trees that were cut on that site. Um, so that that's where my primary concern is. Um, so I'm I'm still not satisfied that we're getting back to what sort of the normal was, but so I mean my take is there's still more work that's got to be done on this plan, and I and I also agree with the issue that you know, it would be great to have that property line transfer done sooner rather than later, uh, but again that kind of stuff can take months if not longer to do. And we're running short on time now in terms of when at least some of the preliminary stuff needs to get planted. But at the same time, if we're talking about maybe having to add a lot more of the woody product, and that's something that's going in in the fall because it's better, then maybe that's something we can take into consideration as well. And so beefing up the, the area towards the back of the properties with additional plantings and things of that nature, that may be a better way to go, assuming that we agree that you know, going in in the fall is a better time for the woody plants. So that's kind of where I'm at. Does it make any sense to maybe come up, agree, give them some kind of a idea on what kind of offset you think we're looking for from the wetland? Is it 25 feet? Is it 50 feet? Does that help, you think? When you say offset, so you, offset for what? From the existing the wetlands here. Here's the wetland. Yeah, like as a conservation easement? No, I'm talking about as the restoration area. You know, do we look at it as that and say, what is the buffer area that we want to have from that wetland area? As we said, this is probably 10 feet, you know? This is this is this is 40 feet. So 40 feet would probably be taking you out into here. You know what I mean? It would do something like this. Is this kind of what we've been looking for, you think? I don't, I don't know, Bruce, because I'm still right. having a hard time wrapping around in my head about how much lumber was removed from the site and how little is going back in. 
that's, George, that's yeah. my bigger concern than anything. George, is it, it could it could it be something that you could give the commission maybe an overlay? What do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean for an overlay? I don't know if the uh, tree line was on the survey, which I don't think it was. No. But is it possible to maybe give them a graphical image on here? Yeah. So they kind of understand where the restoration area is there so so we can see what was there before and, and what and what's going to come back? Yeah, that's that's easy enough to do. I mean, yeah. I could look at that area. I could look at some others too. Yeah. Just kind of do that and have a scale to it. I mean, again, I understand completely and I'm kind of in a precarious position and I hope you understand, right? Yes, we do. I try to come in as, as an objective of you or I'm, 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 you know, I'm not the commission who's upset because, you know, this was done without a uh, proper process. I completely understand that and I will be completely on your side. But on the other hand, what I'm trying to figure out is, okay, what needs to be in there in order to protect the wetland long term and the functions and values and it's just my professional opinion that what we've presented is sufficient now can we increase uh the, the planting scheme a little bit sure we could do that can we put more more plants well to some extent you could do that um you want you don't want to overpopulate it you always want to leave a little room for things to grow in um because some of these shrubs are clonal so they're going to eventually um, take off and other things will come in. So when you do a restoration, you don't, you, you kind of look probably five, five years down the line. What's it gonna look like in five years, maybe even more than that. Um, it's, it's difficult for anyone to come in and say, okay, we're gonna put uh, two and a half caliper trees everywhere. Um, that, that's kind of difficult. That's super expensive and, um, I, I'd rather do do more of the smaller stuff and let nature then take its course. Just one more quick question, and I don't know if anybody can answer it. Have preliminary talks been started between 9 and 11? Is she even on board with selling the property? Yes. He's not selling it, we're swapping it. Well, swapping, selling, whatever you're doing. Is everybody on board with it? Everybody's on board. The lawyers send their paperwork and everything. They're already talking. So there's already legal involved. Do we have an estimated time frame of that? He said it shouldn't be no problem because we're both um, agreed with it. And there's no money exchanging or nothing. It's just a, a swap from for the back. Yeah, and the, in the yeah. back, we're not going to use it. In the front, she's, she uses that. Yeah. There's probably going to there's probably going to have to be. I mean, this property's been surveyed. This one has not been surveyed. So correct. So the surveyor is going to have to come out and survey this property. So so what he can do the land swap, show the land swap. Yes. Right. He already talked. He's already, he's already yeah. talking to the guy that came. Iron pins as well. Yeah. It's it's possible that before now and the next time you folks meet, then maybe we have a graphical representation of what this would look like as far as the swap on on a surveyor's plan. Maybe we can try to do that. That would be nice, and I think if the commission can see something like here with what what the uh, tree line was before and what is kind of and 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 what you're proposing, I think that would be an, another uh, great uh, 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 visual as well. Yeah, I can certainly do that. As a matter of fact, I think that one of the um, places that I go to for for aerials might have an oblique view which you can look at it from several directions and that might help me to uh, do a much better job on where the where the, the actual trees were i mean i can kind of guess here i can see it but um because you can see the stems of the trees mm -hmm. and in areas where you don't see the stems of the trees so you know that the 
where the stems of the trees touch the ground and these kinds of photographs is where the edge of the edge of the clearing is mm -hmm. or the edge of the trees um so yeah we can i can superimpose it i mean had, i think the object is what they have for turf area so what so this line here versus what the new line will look like and i, and I, I think and i think that's what they need to see so we can do that all right that would be appreciated george yeah yeah And uh, Byron, if you could check in with the surveyor, that would be great I'm, to see. I'm, I'm, I'm going to call him tomorrow, first thing in the morning. So, because the lawyer called them and everything, so they could he could show he could send them a a mill, um, from the something called the mill. All right, and then and then what I would if he has any questions, have him he can he can actually call me uh, uh, directly, and I can talk with him to try to explain exactly uh what we're looking for all right no problem you mean as far as a conservation easement that kind of thing too well i think first is the swap i think the conservation easement is going to fall in and and uh correct me if i'm wrong uh, for the uh the commission i want to i don't want to speak for them but i think once the plan is set then we can kind of come up with where the easement has to go okay so, hey um, bruce one yeah. thing that you might check i mean if because if, if there's a survey that's done on nine yes what is the actual road frontage and what is the zoning requirement for frontage i was i've i've been actually been looking at that i think they've they've got plenty okay uh, i think there's i can't it's the other thing here let me see here i'll tell you right now give me a second uh no i mean i just want to make sure it's something that's looked at because oh, definitely. definitely one of the problems that we could theoretically get into is if he doesn't have enough frontage yeah you know, then they start moving around that line. Yeah. That creates other kinds of problems. Unless, yeah, I mean, they unless can... the access to the cul-de-sac is going to remain exactly where it is. Mm -hmm. And you just take, you soften that angle mm -hmm. that's 50 feet in from the cul-de-sac. If that's how you do it, then that makes more sense. Yeah. Because you don't want to create a non-conforming lot. Oh, exactly. But they can they can fool around with this line. Right. This is come up here and then shortness and come out a little different. So yeah, so I just want to make sure that we don't compound the problem and create a non-conforming building lot. I'll tell you right now. Give me one second. I'm, so. It's probably a hundred feet, right? That's what I'm thinking. I just don't have it to my tongue. That's a good question. And I, how does that apply to lot 11? Because she doesn't have anything other She's than... She's got an interior lot, so it's not oh. a problem. Okay. All right. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. They're, well, R40 is a one, the 150-foot frontage. So either this is existing non-conforming or there's a line in there. I, I'd have to figure it out. You know, there's... Sometimes they don't give you all the, all of the, all of the uh, dimensions in here. So... Is an R40, right? Yeah, it's R40. Yeah. Yeah. So. What is that L equals 124 representing? Well, that's the curve. That's the, front. That's okay. the curve. Yeah. And sometimes there may be a lot. In, you got to be careful in here. Well, you're uh, looking at, like, I mean, lot eight is 125. Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you right lot now. This 10 is 111.62 you know, on yeah. the curve. Um, yeah, that says 130. It's roughly 130 feet. So there probably is a little. Yeah, well, you got yeah. you got four feet down. Just <laughs> yeah. below. Oh, right there. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So I guess so I'd have to look and see. Uh, this may have been consideration. Yeah, I'd have to look and see when this was developed, but that may have been the problem. That may have and been. So, and with that being the case, uh, I think what you you end up looking at is you have to soften the curve. It's not mm -hmm. like you can move yeah. the property line along the cul-de-sac yeah yeah he'd have to go something and like still this get the same basic result that yep. that's all i'm getting at exactly so so do something from this so you're yeah. effectively drawing something from here to like something you know something like this whatever they want to do you know well out of the wetlands well yeah whatever you know <laughs> i'm trying to yeah no, Close but, enough. But, no, but yeah. that that's gotcha. kind of what it would be like is because you soften the curve there, yep. which helps person a lot eleven 
get her driveway and stuff onto her property. Mm -hmm. And it helps the owner of a lot nine because he's got the property in the back yeah. that he can get in exchange for the front, but it doesn't change the actual frontage on Apple Tree Lane. Okay. So it's just something to keep in mind. All right. Well, All right. So, George, so you, you know what you have to do in Byron? I think so. Yes. Okay. Yes, I know what I have to do. I'll call first thing in the morning. Okay. All right. Thank you. And hopefully, you know, hopefully maybe sometime in April we'll be able to figure out at least some of the preliminary planting that can go in to take advantage of the spring season and work accordingly. So we'll see. Yeah, I think so. So I'm assuming that we're done on this. And of course, I can't find my, oh, there it is. Oh, give me a second. Yeah. There it is. So I think we're on to planner's report, Bruce. Yes, we are. I don't have anything under planner's report. Okay. Can I get a motion to approve the minutes of the March 1st, 2023 Wetland Commission meeting? So moved, Rich. Is there a second? Anybody going once? <laughs> Twice? Second by Robert Eisner. Okay. I have a motion on the floor to approve the minutes of the Wetlands Commission meeting on March 1st. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, abstain for Ned. Okay, so I've got 837, we'll close the Wetlands Commission meeting and open the Conservation Commission meeting. Um, other I'm, business? I'm saying good night to all. Okay. Good night. All right, George. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, George. There's nothing on the Conservation Commission other than a reminder with the uh, hazardous uh, waste collection day. And that is the used electronics, the household hazardous waste and the shredding, correct? I think you are uh, correct. So the used electronics is still at the town hall, at least the current town hall. Um, shredding is still over at the library, I believe. And then you get to go through that crazy course up at the top of the hill. So I don't know how they're going to do that with all the new construction for household has. Um, hold on, correct me if I'm wrong. I thought there was a, I know that Shannon was doing this. I think, um, isn't this one? Um, I thought for some reason, I'm just trying to see if it's on here. I don't know if we have it on here yet. Um, no, that's different. Because I want to say, you know what? I'll, I'll I'll send it over to you. The locations, all right? Okay. Well, that's what they've been in the past. Yeah, I think for the some only, reason it's moved. Yeah, let me. Construction. Yeah, well, me... they have they have the new parking lot in front of the old school too, where mm -hmm. they've got that additional parking. So. They could move some of it over to there. Yeah. Yeah, let me look. I... Just don't get there too early, so you have to park out on Route there. 4. Oh, there's right here, yep. March March 25th at Farmington High School, 10 uh, Monteith Drive, so. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yep. I've already started boxing up a bunch of stuff that needs to be shredded because I don't have the time to do it all. Um, and nothing on planner's report, correct? Nothing. Um, I mean, before we, we 
have a motion to approve the minutes. I just want to acknowledge uh, that project uh, dealing with the cap project and the fishery thing that it was an interesting project and mm -hmm. I'd, I'd like to see more people from the school doing something like that i think it was very well done mm -hmm. but i'm not sure i agree with ned's idea about having a snorkeling group <laughs> what better just way to count ned. the fish just saying ned <laughs> we'll, har we'll harpoon them count them and throw them back yeah, there's no telling how far uh, Ned will go into those culverts if he has a snorkel. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, can I get a motion to approve the minutes of the March 1st, 2023 Conservation Commission meeting? So moved, Rich. <laughs> Is there a second? Second by Robert Eisner. Okay, so I have a motion to approve the minutes of the March 1st, 2023 Conservation Commission meeting. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining? Same. So that should do this. Um, hey, hey, Bob, um, the stuff that Bruce is sharing now shows that there's a two box limit on documents right in. So. <laughs> might, have to, might have to stuff them real tight. It, does, it doesn't say how big the boxes can be, though, Bob. So, That's you know, you well, gotta get a couple refrigerator okay, boxes. I've, I've got one box I can tape up. It's a huge box. It'll take two. I don't know if I'll get it out of the car. So I've got, I've got like two and a half boxes, so I might be able to talk them into it, but... That's okay. There's always next year because I have a, another batch of papers that are more than seven years old I can get rid of. Um, okay, no, that's good. Um, I just wanted to say I, I anticipate being able to participate in the next wetlands meeting. I'm probably traveling down south early April, but I haven't made any final arrangements. But I should be available to participate in, what is it, is it April 5th, I think? Is that the, the date? Oh, all right. Bob, you're all set. They don't yep. start tea time. They, they end tea times at 6.30 until April 6th. <laughs> yeah. So I just have to travel a little bit. Yeah, it's April 5th. Okay. Um, I should be available for that, but I'm just letting Robert know in advance. I should be around regardless of whether you're here or not. Okay. Okay. So... But like I said, I think I should probably be able to make it. However, I'm not sure whether it'll be from Connecticut or South Carolina. Well, all right. Um, so I think that takes care of just this evening. I thank everybody for their discussion. Um, interesting project. Just leave it at that. So have a good time. Everybody be safe. And hopefully we'll see you early April for the next meeting. Good night. Bye, everyone. Good night, folks. Good night, everybody.